On the whole, it has been a disappointing exercise. I remember as a student in Britain being taught constitutional law by a very distinguished professor who had been one of Churchill's cabinet secretaries. And he illustrated with the example of Ceylon how the ideal transition to democracy and self-government would take place. Uh, they had their first municipal elections in 1932 for mayor of Colombo and a council for Colombo. They had two universities that had a thick layer of uh, professionals and administrative officers. They had large sterling balances. So they started off with all the advantages that would ensure progress and prosperity. Of course, he, I was taught this in 1947 when Ceylon had just got independence. And India, of course, had just gone into turmoil with breakup of Pakistan and India. I have never believed that democracy brings progress. <laughs> I know it to have brought regression. I watch it year by year, every two years when I meet my fellow members of the leaders of the Commonwealth. And it need not have been thus. The British never governed these countries by one man, one vote. It was one British government, one British resident, and his word was law. And we had good district officers whose word was also law for that district. The conclusion that no ingenious democratic system of one man, one vote can ever bridge the divide between a majority Sinhalese population of about 14 to 16 million whose intention is to dominate and to bring down some two million Tamils in Jaffna to their level. And Jaffna Tamils have, by tradition, been the better educated, been the administrators, been the judges, been the professionals. And that this breakup into warfare was inevitable. It was a feudal society where the landlord controlled the votes of illiterate peasants. It was a divided society, although they were all Muslims. And sure enough, it's fallen apart. So I think regardless of the present missionary zeal of the Americans of democracy and human rights which has broken up the Soviet Union it would be misguided to believe that what has worked in very special circumstances in amongst European societies and what is barely working in Korea and Taiwan is universally valid how to establish good government Good government means a government that considers itself a trustee of the people, whether you're king, chief, or whatever. Not somebody in temporary charge and insecure and therefore out to, s to settle an annuity and a nest egg for yourself, which is what has happened in so many countries. So if you ask me what my thoughts on decolonization are, I think they are grim because Western political sci scientists have not lived in these societies, have not understood that what is required is economic progress, development, and the final blossoming of a large educated middle class which alone can sustain a democracy. When you have 
60 to 70 percent of your population educated, knowing what will work and what will not work, then one man, one vote makes sense. Why this way on Hong Kong to the British, who do not have either military or economic clout to hurt me, then I'm inviting trouble from Chris Patton. I mean, sorry, from Bill Clinton. <laughs> Chris Patton, Chris Patton can only express his exasperation, but Bill Clinton can turn MFN off. Hong Kong deserves democracy, but alas, in the world as it is, we do not often get what we deserve. Yeah. <laughs>